What is this? Random multiple cylinder misfire detected. Okay. Check in the OBD. Let's see. Back. Pending codes. Cylinder 8, 7, 9, and 10. Misfire. I think that what we're probably looking at here are some bad coils and um, coil packs and maybe plugs. The car's got about 80,000 miles on it. And I think it's time to do the plugs and, and coils. Fuel level sensor circuit. Interesting. That won't, that doesn't go in anymore. So let's go back and reset these codes and erase them using my Foxwell. This is a nice cheap, you know, unit for doing this kind of stuff. And let's go back. Let's see. Let's go ahead and, and start the car, see what happens. I get another light focus for me there there we go so far no looks like that temporarily cleared it let's see I don't know if this gives live data you know you got to get the really nice expensive units that do that kind of stuff and I don't know if it'll read while the engines are running but this is a pretty common issue with these cars. You end up with uh, coal packs, things like that, spark plugs. So yeah, I, I've been planning on doing a video about this. Uh, I've got 12 Bosch coal packs and new spark plugs, and we're planning on doing a uh, video about how to do the plugs and coal packs. I know that I remember when Hoovy got his phantom about a year or so ago one of his was misfiring and uh car wizard replaced it you can get those coal packs for like 25 30 bucks for a cheap chinese one i went ahead and bought the good bosch ones but uh we'll do a video on how to do that coming up soon but this is a standard bmw 760 series li 12 cylinder engine and these are some of the common things that happen with them all right, we're doing some live data reading here. And um, yeah, we've got an RPM idle of about 731. That's really good. Spark advance 3.5. Let's see here. You know, it's not going to let me monitor each and every cylinder. Things like that. This doesn't do that kind of stuff. This will do a... Uh, O2 monitor test, bank sensor one. This is a great little unit for, you know, these Foxwells, I think they're about under 200 bucks. Maybe they're 250. I don't remember how much they were. I'll put a link to it in the description down below if you guys want one. But uh, it's a heck of a little reader for the price, you know, compared to, I mean, I've seen guys bring up units that we're talking about a $20,000 tablet, you know what I mean? Just to read this thing. And this thing will let you read and reset a code. I mean, I can reset my oil and other things like that on here, things that you could normally only do at the dealer. And um, it's a little slow and it's a little rinky dinky, but you know, it is what it is. The thing is, is uh, it's, it's essential to own one of these little tools if you're gonna own any kind of BMW product because <laughs> You know, they have a lot of onboard monitoring systems for every little thing. I mean, and that's great. You know, that's great to be able to know everything that's happening with your car and to be able to maintain it, which is a good, which is a good thing. But it can be it can be a pain in the butt, especially when, you know, I think I'm done with this thing. I'm going to turn this off, you know. So basically 
rather than having some of the basic gauges in here, like I don't have a fuel pressure, I don't have a fuel temperature, I don't have, looking at the dash, you know, I don't even have a voltage gauge. I have fuel temperature, and I don't even have RPMs. They have this thing called power reserve. So they really don't, you know, they expect the people who have these cars to just be, to just trust them. And I got to say, look, 15 years, 80,000 miles. Now, 80,000 miles is not a lot of miles, but 15 years is still a long time. Rubber goes bad, plastic goes bad, and things wear out, things leak. You lose a little pressure here, a little, little problem there, and it's just age. Hot, cold, you know, wet, dry. All of these things affect plastics and and rubber and polyurethanes and liquids and all these different things. And these coal packs, you, you figure there's 12 cylinders. Um, and in order to run uh, at optimum, for instance, you know, previous car I had before I got my Cadillac was I had a Dodge Magnum, which had that uh, 5.7 liter multi-displacement Hemi. And it had uh, two spark plugs per cylinder, one on a coal pack, one without. Very interesting system, and it ran on alternating four cylinders to save gas. So when you're on like the highway on cruise control going 60, you were running on four cylinders, and it was utilizing its extra torque, which is a great thing for saving gas. But, you know, this car, the reason it has 12 cylinders isn't just necessarily for power, but the more cylinders that you have, the less vibration you're going to have and the less uh, what they call lug. You know, like when you have a Harley that only has two cylinders, there's a lot of lug. You've got that pop, 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 you know? And and that creates vibration and and chugging and, you know, you got 12 cylinders, this thing sits here and runs and you literally cannot tell it's running. You can't feel or hear the thing at all. Whereas with a Lamborghini, you know, uh, you could probably make a Lamborghini or a Ferrari super quiet if you encapsulated everything and, and proofed it up the way this car is done. Um, so it's a, it's a really good system, but it requires a lot more maintenance, and that's the luxury of it. I think the sweet spot that we figured out in the world of combustion engines is the 350 V8, you know, probably the most common and reliable engine ever made. And... You know that's a good sweet spot uh, for a motor, and and there's you could those motors will get a couple of hundred thousand miles out of them for the amount of money that you spend for the amount of horsepower and torque and performance that you get. You got to consider all of those factors. Anyway, I'll follow up on this as we get going, and it looks like we're going to be doing some coils and plugs on this car and probably another major tune-up. We're probably going to go ahead and change the oil and a couple of other little things. I just need to get some space on my rack because we're busy doing our Knight Rider car in there. I know you guys love it when I do anything that has to do with the Rolls-Royce, so thanks for tuning in and checking out the car. And... Uh, Stay tuned. If you are a fan of Rolls-Royce videos, please check out my other videos on this channel. I probably have more videos about the Rolls-Royce Phantom than anybody else here on YouTube. And there's going to be many more because this is my daily driving car. And there's always going to be a check engine light that's going to be giving me a hassle. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. I know this is a short little video and kind of anticlimactic, but hey, it is what it is. This is what it's like to own and drive a Rolls-Royce every day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.